We're in Port Erin today for the Festival of the Sea and we're going to go and check out the marine uh, tanks to see some of the animals that we've collected. Hey guys, welcome back to The Diving Developer. Now we're going to be talking about the Isle of Man Festival of the Sea today. The Festival of the Sea is an annual event on the Isle of Man and the main attraction at the festival are the large live animal exhibits. Now, these animals are collected by scuba divers a couple of days before the event and released back into the sea immediately afterwards. In this video you're going to come along with us where we go look for some of these sea creatures um, and bring them back for the aquarium only for a while before bringing them back to sea again. This allows children and adults to learn about the seas immediately surrounding them. So it has been said that you cannot protect what you don't know. So by bringing some of these species that usually only scuba divers have the privilege to see to an aquarium where others can see them and understand them and develop an appreciation for them, we hope to be able to protect them for future generations. This is really important, especially on a small island. So my son and I, we pack all of our scuba kit into the car and head down to the boat. Once we're there, we need to do checks to make sure that all of our equipment is working exactly as we expect it to. Okay, wait. We do our body safety checks and then get in the water. These videos are a lot of work, so if you like this content, please consider liking, leave a comment below and subscribe for more of the same. We check each other to make sure we're okay, and then we signal each other to commence the descent. We wear special diving buoyancy jackets, and we vent all of the air from them to start our descent. We drop down to about 12 meters, which is about six times deeper than an average swimming pool. And down here we can see immediately urchins, we can see lots of pink encrusting algae. We're passed by several beautifully coloured wrasse. We take a few seconds before heading off just to get ourselves squared away, to get our breathing under control and to get our buoyancy absolutely nailed. So we start looking for the things we've been asked to find. We just start searching through the local seaweeds first. And Dylan's found something. He's found a starfish. It's a purple henry starfish. Now, it doesn't matter what colour they are, they come in all kinds of colours, but they're called purple henrys. We're not going to hold the animals in our hands for the entire dive. We've brought with us a number of containers. We have an ice cream tub container, we have some takeaway food containers, and we also have a large net bag, which is very useful for carrying crustaceans. We're just waiting here for Dylan to get the ice cream container out of his pocket. As divers, we have a number of pockets. We have dry suit pockets on our thighs, and we also sometimes have accessory pockets on our sides too. There it is. If you look at the container, you'll see it's actually been crushed. That's because of the pressure. We're currently here at about two and a half atmospheres. Just a moment for some fatherly pride here. I'm really proud of my son. He's doing all of this while remaining completely flat in the water. This is called neutral buoyancy, and it means you're neither going up nor down. It means you're perfectly in control. It's quite a nice feeling. It's like being weightless. At around 15 meters depth, we come across some really varied ocean surface. We've got sand and we've got some mixed gravel. The crabs and lobsters like to hide out underneath these rocks you can see in the distance here. How many animals can you see on these rocks? So if you look carefully, you can see we have these urchins. Now these are kind of like hedgehogs, they're kind of like grazers. They move around eating the algae, especially the pink encrusting algae that you can see on the edges here. In the middle of the frame, we have a cat shark. Some people call these dogfish, but they're a different species entirely. And you can also see some common um, sort of thorny uh, starfish. Hey there, little shark. As you go deeper and deeper in the ocean, you notice that the light starts to get really dark and changes colours in really funny ways. Well, one of the consequences of that is that plant life, seaweeds and so on, start to give way to animals, since animals don't need to photosynthesise in the dark. So these are all animals. There's a little bit of red seaweed in there, but everything else you see is animal life. Those strange things that look like ethereal light bulbs are called light bulb sea squirts. We find a sponge that we think would be interesting. There's quite a few of these around, so we don't feel too bad taking this one. My dive computer shows that we're at 15.3 meters here, and that we have to do a three minute safety stop on our way up. 
This is really important that we stop. This lets the nitrogen that we're absorbing into our body at depth get released before we arrive on the surface. It's an extra special safety thing we do as divers. So Dylan has the sponge and we're just preparing to pop it into the ice cream tub. We carry knives as scuba divers usually to keep ourselves safe in the event we get entangled, but they're really useful here. Here's Dylan putting his knife away. We've collected quite a few things here. We've collected a couple of urchins, we've collected some larger starfish that you can see in this bag. Dylan takes the bag while I deploy the delayed surface marker buoy and on we go upwards to the boat. 20 minutes later. Tomorrow. Okay, this is the Manx Wildlife Trust tent where we have touch tanks where we were yesterday picking up critters from the dive. And they eat clams, so that's why sometimes you'll see that. Yes. That goes towards that and that'll shoot off. Yeah, so, before, so, before, so what happens is you've got a mouth right in the middle of that little circle there, that's their mouth. Because they've got suckers on their feet, they'll climb over a clam or a mussel and they put the suckers on and they'll open it. Now it can take hours, it could even take days. But once they've got that open enough, they push the stomach through the mouth and into the clam and then they inflate it like a balloon and then they use a special enzyme, a chemical, to turn it all into a soup. Obviously there are ethical considerations when you bring wildlife into captivity, even if it's just temporary. One of the things we do as divers is we ensure that when we're selecting a target species that we don't take anything that could be considered to be rare in that habitat. So we would only take one of something. When we bring back crustaceans like lobsters or crabs, we bring back just one per net. This prevents them from fighting when they're being brought up. Obviously this is kinder than if they were being fished and of course we're not going to eat them, we will return them to the sea afterwards. Certain delicate species risk being hurt by the process of bringing them up and then putting them back down again, which is why we tend to avoid these. And of course there's a problem with putting them back exactly where we found them. In previous years we have seen some animals, notably the little starfish, being hurt by the process, um, especially if kids are sticking their hands inside the tanks. So this year nobody's touching them at all except for the volunteers. It's very hard to understand what's in the oceans unless you're a diver, snorkeler or you just watch a lot of David Attenborough videos by showing people exactly what's around them. I would hope that people gain a new appreciation for some of these animals. Perhaps they haven't seen them before. Perhaps they haven't learnt about some of their more sophisticated behaviour and interactions. They're valuable in their own right. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I ask you to like, comment and subscribe. Now, um, I'm trying to do one video a week. Uh, hopefully you've seen over the past few videos that I've done the quality's improved. But if there's anything you'd like me to see or like me to cover, perhaps you'd like to learn more about the dives we do or the equipment that we use, perhaps you'd like me to switch the channel a little bit and do videos about business. Um, I certainly have an idea for a business series in mind, so that'll be coming soon. Um, but in the meantime, stay safe out there and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.